Hi everyone and welcome to the module 11 video. We are going to be going over um, the ideas of this module starting with the regression equation. And so it's basically going to be all about the regression equation and then how we use it, how we interpret it, things like that. So we're going to start with just a very quick what is this thing? You know, what do we care about here? So the setup is, and, and this is the reading that I have up right now, uh, the setup is we have data, so we may have drawn some data to start this problem or whatever problem we're working on. And so we've got a little graph here and we've got some data points. So we've got some data points like this, okay. So there's our data and looking at this data we see, okay, here's some variable x, here's some variable y, I seem to notice a pattern. So remember, we were saying whenever you see a pattern in your data, we were calling that an association. And with two quantitative variables later, we will call this correlation. But for now, we've only seen the word association, just that there's some connection between the two and we can see that graphically. Right, So that's our scenario. Well, that's great, right? It's nice to be able to see there's a connection between two variables, but what else can we do? Why is that useful? And one way it's useful is to create this thing called the regression equation. So in this case, we are doing linear regression. So this is important here, linear regression. We are doing linear regression, which means that we are trying to fit our data, the picture we have over here, we're trying to fit this picture here to a line, linear. Right? That's not always the best thing to do. Sometimes your data can, can have a connection, an association there, but maybe it's not linear. Maybe it follows some other pattern. And in that case, you can do a different type of regression. But for now, we're just going to stick with linear. And the goal of this is to say, okay, I see a pattern here. Well, can I get kind of down to the, the pattern I see, even if it's not perfect? And the way I like to think about doing that is trying to draw a line through my data that in essence tells me the pattern. So again, it's not perfect, right? I can't see a perfect pattern that this data fits to. But in general, it looks to me like as I increase along the x, what seems to happen is that as I go along the x, so I, I'm moving, I'm moving this way along the x, it seems like the, the y values of each point seem to also increase. So I'm kind of low down here, and as I go this way, the points are generally higher up. Okay, so what we can do is we can use a, a regression, a linear regression here, in order to create a line to try to understand that. And so what's really nice about this is this line comes with actual specific numbers we get to, to play around with. Remember from the review, y equals mx plus b. And so the, the nice thing about this is we do a regression line with our data. We now have a slope and a y-intercept, these two numbers, we get real numbers we can hold on to, we can think about what they mean, we can use them. So the goal of this is to take a pattern you see graphically, so just like this pattern you see, and do something mathematically to turn it into numbers we can take, think about, manipulate. So that's the whole goal here is take your pattern that's graphical, you just see it, make it into numbers we can learn about, play with. That's the regression equation. So we're going to jump to the applet and do a little example. This is done out in the book as well, but we're going to kind of go through it too. Okay, here we are. We're at the um, Rossman Chance applet. And so we see that this is preloaded with some data. You can, of course, put in your own data if you want to do this, which we will be doing together. But we're going to use the preloaded data for just uh, right now. It's got two things, foot length and height. So you've got the length of your foot and the height of your person. And so we see, based on the picture here, there is definitely, it looks like, a pattern. So, okay, there seems to be a pattern here. 
right? So there's some pattern, and we want to be able to say, okay, with this pattern, right? So here's our pattern. We need to be able to say, okay, with this pattern, can I now get some kind of actual numbers to play with and manipulate? And the way we're going to do that is by doing the regression line. But first things first, why don't we use some of our module 9 right at the end review stuff, but maybe that's not quite review stuff, to just name some stuff about this pattern. So a couple things. First, it seems to be linear, right? Looks like this looks like it could kind of fit on a line, not perfectly, but you know, pretty much linear. Okay. It seems it's not the strongest. Uh, you know, it's moderate, maybe moderate strength. It's not the strongest pattern in the world. If it was really strong, they would be really close to just lying all on a line together, right? If it was really weak, then they would be much more spread out where you could just kind of barely see the pattern. All right, so it's linear. It's got some moderate strength, and it's also positive. And we'll come back to this positive idea with the regression line. But remember, positive just means that the values move together. What do I mean by that? Well, increase foot length, what happens with the heights? They also increase. As I go this way, increase the foot length. It seems like the points in general, as the foot length increases, the height goes up too. So goes up, goes up. Okay, so that's positive. All right, so what we want to do then is now try our best to fit a line to this. So there's a couple things that we can do. So we can click this button here, show movable line. And this will let us try to fit our own line to the data points. And so you can play around with this a little bit. I'm going to have you do this um, uh, when we get together in class. We're going to be doing this with our own set of data that we've collected together. But you can kind of say, like, OK, well, how does this line fit? Well, maybe that's kind of the middle. But if I go like this, then you know I, I'm missing some points down here and up here that's not great so maybe I'll change the slope of the line oh that's fitting a little bit better you know not up here though because look at all these points down here and okay so maybe there maybe we'll just say this is good okay so that's a line we've drawn through the points that we're trying to say looks like it does a good job describing the pattern all right so what we need to think about now is how do I do the best line? So we need to stop and think, why was this line I just drew better than this one? So how come? How come when I draw this line, your brain's going, no, that's not good. That doesn't fit the pattern. But this one does. So hopefully you're, you're thinking a little bit more. And as I draw kind of this one, oh, that's not fitting the pattern. But this one fits better. You're thinking to yourself, well, we want the points to be close to the line. So points close to the line is best. So if you get the points closer to the line, that's going to be better. It's going to fit the pattern better. Okay. So then what we really want to do is we want to measure how far each point is from the line. And we somehow want to put all that together and if that number is big, we're going to say bad. If that number is small, we're going to say, oh, yeah, we did a good job. So here is the, the general idea with how this regression line works. Because I told you, here's data. I give you a regression line. That means there's one I pick out. It's the one special one. Well, how do I get it? I take this idea here of the best line. Okay, And what I say is I and this isn't exactly perfectly what happens, but it's it's very close to the idea, is I say I sum or add up all of the distances from my data points to the line. Okay, so I take all of these distances. And so you might be thinking about like, oh, that's hard to look at. Well, watch this. Click this button, show residuals. I'm trying then to minimize these lines here. So watch what happens. So this one, we were like, oh, yeah, we're doing a pretty good job here. Let's go to a bad one. 
well, look at how bad this one is, right? This line does a bad job because all of these distances got really big. But as I pull this up, I can make some of those distances really small. Again, I go up here. I've made some of these small, but oh, I've really made a lot more of these much bigger. So, oh, that's bad. I got to go back down here. I could change the slope too, and you can see that some of these distances are also changing. These ones here, these ones here for sure are changing a lot, right? So, the regression line is how do I move this line up and down, slope, tilted? How do I move it? to try to minimize these distances. So I want to try to minimize that as best as possible. That's the general idea of a regression line, is that I want to take up all of these lengths here from point to line. I want to, I want to look at those. I want to kind of add them all up. And then I want to make that as small as possible. I want to choose a line that makes that as small as possible. Okay. So I sum up all the distances from the point to the line, and I want to minimize that. I want to make it small. Right? So my regression line will be, it's not exactly this, it's close, it's not exactly this, basically this idea of trying to minimize these distances. If you, we're not going to, you know, I'm not going to test you on this specifically. But the actual real thing that happens is not minimizing these distances. It's actually minimizing the squared distances. So what happens is we take this distance between point and line. We square it, which is represented by this square, the area of the square. And we want to make these boxes all as small as possible. And so you can kind of see as I move, the boxes all change. Right? So as I move up, all of these points get big boxes. That's bad. As I move closer, look, the boxes get small. Awesome. OK, awesome. As I move over here, oh, look at all these giant boxes. That's bad. As I go down here, I, I can make those boxes all small again. So what you really, for the regression line, end up doing is minimizing these squared differences, these squared lengths here. So it's a little different, but the general idea is the same. We want to have our points as close to the line as possible. How do we measure that? Well, we look at the difference between them, and we're trying to, over all the points, try to minimize that. So that's the general idea of what we want to do. So let me get rid of these now and show that. So let me bring this line back. Okay. OK, so hopefully that's not terrible, that idea of trying to do the best we can. That has a formula, right? There's just a formulaic way to do this. That's how the computer is doing it. We're not going to go over the formula because it's a little hefty. But what we are going to do is just use the computer here to show the regression line. So I'm going to click this button, Show Regression Line, right at the bottom here. And that will fill in the actual regression line for us. So that's going to show us this is what it should look like. All right. So let's write that down because we can actually just go down here and grab it. So here it is. So we've got height is equal to some number plus another number times foot length. Okay. So we're going to write that up a little bit higher here just so we can use it. So let's rewrite that. So here's my regression. And all you have to do is click the button to get it. Regression equation, and we'll talk through it, is height. And you'll, you'll often see a little hat on the height here. Equals 38.30 plus 1.03 times foot length, which I'll just write foot because I ran out of room. OK. so. Here's our regression equation. This equation is giving us an idea about what this pattern looks like. And it's giving us two pieces of information which are super important. So you'll see, in a, you'll see now why in module 9, the review, we were asking you to pick out these numbers and talk about them because they're so important. So there's two things we have to point out, right? Remember, y equals mx plus B. It's the same form, right? Same exact form. So what's your slope? 
your slope is 1.03. And what's your B, your intercept? 38.30. So what we're going to want to do then is we're going to want to talk about what these numbers mean and help us kind of try to explain the pattern here. So let's start with the slope. So the slope m is 1.03. Let's start there. What does this mean? Well, we can always write this out contextually using our variables right here and here. And the slope, remember, tells me how does the line change. The slope is how does this change? First things first, notice 1.03 is positive. That's what we said the direction was, positive. But that's just because the slope is positive. So those things match each other. The slope's positive, awesome. The direction of the association's positive, check. OK, what else? What other thing can we talk about here? Well, remember what the slope is. The slope tells me how height changes based on foot length. So. Here's a trick. If you forget how to use slope here, watch what you can do. The slope is 1.03, but that's actually 1.03 over 1. So this is a little trick you can do so that it's easier for you to connect what's going on here. And so what you can write then in a little sentence is if I increase foot length by one centimeter, because that's the units, don't forget your units. If you increase foot length by one centimeter, then height increases by 1.03 inches on average. So what are we saying in this picture here? We're saying, in general, not 100% this will happen, but in general, if you go up by one centimeter in foot length, we should expect about an increase in a little over one inch in height. So this tells us that as foot length goes up, height goes up. That's what the pattern looks like. We see that from the picture. But specifically, we think that if you go up a centimeter, you should go up about one inch. So you should now be thinking to yourself, oh, look at all these things I can now do with this. Now, if I have two foot lengths, I can kind of try to do a prediction for what the difference in heights will be. If I know your foot length and someone else's foot length, I can try to approximate or guess at the difference in your heights too, which is pretty neat. The other thing, once you've hit that, that you should be thinking of is, wait, I don't need just two people here. I can just do this for a person. I now have the ability to try to predict someone's height based only on knowing their foot length. And that is one of the very powerful things that the regression equation does, is this idea of kind of trying to predict. So we're going to go more into that in the next module. but. It's important for you to know kind of why we're doing this. Why does is, is this so important? And one of the most important things is this like really cool idea of being able to predict what's going to happen using this regression equation. And we're now going to talk about the y-intercept, which just be careful, the y-intercept does not always help us. Okay, so. The y-intercept in this case is right here. It's b. So remember, this is the y-intercept. Sometimes you'll also hear it called the vertical intercept because you might not be using x and y. Like we're not using x and y. We're using height and foot. So you might instead want to call this the vertical intercept. But for some of you, it's going to be more natural to just say y-intercept. And that's totally fine. OK. What does this number tell us? Well, it says the same thing every time. B equals 38.30. First of all, this is a height. Okay, The units on that are whatever the units are of your dependent variable. 
So immediately, that's always just the dependent variable units or, or the idea. It's height, which is inches. Okay, so this is just in inches. It's so the, the intercept in this case is 38.30 inches. That's it. Okay, but what's the foot length then, right? Because we just talked the whole time about a connection between height and foot length. So if I give you a height, you should immediately be thinking, well, what's the foot length? Well, let's go to the equation. Let's go back to the equation, right? So if I'm telling you that the height is 38.30, so all I'm doing is plugging it in for height, then what foot length is that? Well, just look at the formula. So let's look at this formula. I'm telling you that the, the B value, the intercept here, the vertical intercept is just a height value. Okay. Well, if it's just a height value, then how do I make this equation work? I've got a 38.3 on both sides. How does that make sense? There's this extra junk. Well, if this equation is true, this extra junk has to be zero. It has to go away. How do you make two numbers multiplied zero? You've got to make one of them zero. So remember, the intercept is the value of the dependent variable when the independent variable is zero. So foot length has to be zero. So what in the world does this intercept mean? It means based on our regression equation. Careful, we're not saying this is the 100% truth. We're saying based on the regression equation, we think that if you have a foot length of zero centimeters, you will be 38.30 inches tall. So our regression equation is predicting that a person with foot length zero will be 38.30 inches tall. That's ridiculous. There's, this is not something that we should even be considering. So foot length zero is not something that we want to consider. So this doesn't really actually mean anything. So this means nothing to us. Because, why does this mean nothing to us? Because it doesn't mean anything for us to talk about foot length equals zero. So if you ever are in a scenario where this variable right here, foot length, if that variable equaling zero is not something that makes sense, it's not reality, something that would happen for you or something you care about, then we basically don't care about this number B in context. It has no contextual meaning. It has a meaning to set up this line, like it's important for the line, but it doesn't mean anything for us. So if this variable, the independent variable, equaling zero makes no sense, then there's no reason to talk about the context of this number. But there are scenarios where it does make sense. Okay, so don't always be just assuming this means nothing contextually. It can, but just be thinking sometimes, what does it mean for this variable to be zero? If it's nothing, then don't worry about it. We don't have to care about the context here. Okay, so we've got the two pieces, slope and the vertical intercept. We've talked about how to talk about those in context, when they matter. The slope always matters, the intercept not always. We've talked about what the importance is of this line and a little bit on kind of how we think about getting it. Feel free to play with the movable lines and, and kind of see you know, what you can get to. 